Welcome to Floyd Valley Healthcare Joint Cap. At Floyd Valley Healthcare, we're focused on keeping all the care you need convenient, accessible, local, and you moving. In this video, our staff will review your hip procedure, how to prepare, and what you can expect when you head home after being discharged. Making the decision to have a joint replacement is a big one. Our joint camp will review your procedure and help you take advantage of all the post-op care and services available at Floyd Valley that can make your surgery a success. Let's get started. Here's what you'll need to know before your surgery. Now, no matter how independent you are, you'll need assistance. This means you'll need to plan for help at home. You'll need to consider equipment needed at home, meal prep or assistance, and help at home, such as family members or home health. If you have any of these items available, they can support your recovery at home, such as a toilet riser, grab bars in the shower, or grab bars near the toilet for transfer on and off, slip-on shoes, looser pants, or a shower chair or bench for bathing. You will need to use a walker after surgery to assist in pain control and improved movement. We recommend a front-wheeled walker, not a four-wheeled walker with a seat. Four-wheeled walkers do not allow you to walk within the frame of the walker and tend to get away from you too easily. If you have a walker at home or can borrow one, please bring it with you. We will be able to adjust it to the correct height for you. If you do not have access to one, insurance will typically cover one assistive device every five years. Floyd Valley Healthcare can assist you in getting a walker through insurance while you are in the hospital if needed. You can prepare your home by moving frequently used items that are on a lower shelf to counter height. Pick up or move any throw rugs, extension cords, or other tripping hazards such as pet toys. Move furniture so that you have pathways that a walker will fit through. If you have stairs that are wide enough to fully set a walker onto, you can be taught to use the walker to go up and down. If you have narrow stairs without a railing or grab bar, please consider installing at least one grab bar or hand railing. If you have steps to get into your home, you'll want to consider how many there are and if they could arise as an issue later on. Also keep in mind the location of your bedroom and bathroom. If they're not on the main floor, you'll want to consider another temporary option. Cooking may also be a challenge after your procedure. If you have concerns about meals, please let us know the day you have surgery and we can help you with this. And again, don't forget to discuss help at home. Don't go it alone. Having the proper assistance and following your treatment plan will support a successful recovery. Let's discuss recommended preoperative exercises. Your team will provide a handout detailing the preoperative exercise recommendations. These exercises create a motor memory in the muscles, which will help you with your recovery after surgery. The first exercise is the straight leg raise. These can be completed on a bed or couch. To start, lie down on your back with your hips square and your legs laid out comfortably. Then bend the knee at a 90 degree angle, planting the foot flatly on the bed. Inhale slowly, lifting the straight leg six inches off of the bed. Hold that for approximately three seconds. Exhale slowly and lower the leg to the bed with control. Relax and repeat 10 times more. The second exercise is the quad set. These can be completed on a bed or couch. First, place a small rolled up hand towel underneath your knee. Gently push the back of your knee down toward the better couch, squashing the towel. Hold for three seconds and relax. Repeat this exercise 10 times within 10 minutes or until your leg is tired. We'll need a complete list of the prescription medications, over-the-counter medications, vitamins, and supplements that you currently take. The pre-op nurse will call to discuss which medications must be stopped and which are clear to take the day of. Any routine medications needed during your stay will be provided by Floyd Valley Healthcare, as well as any needed for pain, blood clot prevention, or infection prevention. The night before surgery, we're gonna have you shower up real good using an antibacterial soap. Any antibacterial soap, just as long as it says antibacterial soap. Scrub that extremity up real well. Don't put any lotions, creams, or powders on after you shower up. Nothing to eat or drink after midnight, the night prior to surgery. You can continue to drink clear liquids up until four hours prior if you're diabetic and three hours if you're non-diabetic. We do recommend that you drink a 12 ounce Gatorade of your choice as your last drink. It just gives your body electrolytes and some good carbs to kind of get you through that surgery. The morning of surgery, we'll have you shower again using that same antibacterial soap. Again, no lotions, creams, or powders after to your shower. Make sure that you don't have any toenail polish on. Remove all the jewelry, leave all your valuables at home. Check-in time is gonna be two hours prior to surgery. You'll check in here at Floyd Valley using the west entrance of the hospital. When you check in, you're gonna need your photo ID, your insurance information, your overnight bag, and of course your trusty walker. 
loose fitting clothing for when you're up in the hallways after surgery with physical therapy and when you go home. Make sure you got some good shoes with some non-skid treads so that way you're not slipping or tripping in the hallways as well. If you use a CPAP machine at home, make sure you bring that with you because you will be spending at least one overnight. If you have any dentures, hearing aids, glasses, make sure you bring the cases if you have them so that way we can protect them when you go to surgery. After you check in downstairs, the admitting area will bring you up to the surgery department where you will meet with myself or some other team members. And you can expect to be in the pre-op area for about two hours prior to your surgery. And in the pre-op area, we are gonna get everything finalized into the computer, make sure we check your last doses of medications, start your IV, give you the proper fluids and medications that you need. You will meet with anesthesia that morning along with your surgeon. So if there's any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask us. I'm talking to you today about the anesthetic procedures that are going to occur on the day of surgery. The preoperative nurse is going to give you some preoperative medication that the anesthesia department has ordered. Those medications are non-narcotic medications meant to help with your pain postoperatively by decreasing the inflammatory response that occurs during surgery. And then we're going to get you ready to have your anesthetic for the surgery itself. For a hip procedure, we typically do those under spinal anesthetic and heavy sedation. There are several reasons that we prefer that over general anesthesia. The biggest reason is because patients who are having a total joint replacement are likely to develop a blood clot more likely than the average person. A spinal anesthetic decreases that risk, so we feel like that's a benefit to you as a patient. Additionally, having a spinal anesthetic is going to decrease the amount of pain that you experience in the initial post-operative period, that's six hours immediately following surgery. And the final reason that we prefer spinal anesthesia over a general anesthetic is because we don't have to put a breathing tube into your airway. You get to take a very nice nap with a little bit of oxygen through a nasal cannula, but the spinal anesthetic is the primary anesthetic agent that we're using while you sleep in the OR while the surgeon is operating. Before we take you back to the OR, though, we're going to also do a nerve block under ultrasound guidance. It's going to allow us to inject a local anesthetic while we're watching our needle move in real time to help decrease the risk of any sort of nerve damage or damage to underlying structures like blood vessels. That nerve block is going to allow you to have great pain care after the procedure. That medication sits there for about 24 to 48 hours. It's going to help with your pain after surgery, but it's not going to take all of it away. So there are other medications we're going to utilize to help decrease that pain. Our goal for patients is always for them to have a tolerable pain level. What that really means is that you're able to do your physical therapy. You can get up, get yourself dressed when you go home. You're not nauseated, so you're eating well. All of those things are necessary for good post-operative pain control as well as good wound healing. So that nerve block is gonna go in before we take you back to the OR. And we do them pre-operatively for a couple reasons. The biggest reason is because once the surgeon has inserted the new components for your hip, we don't want to increase the risk of infection by inserting a needle. But additionally, we're decreasing the amount of pain that those nerves are experiencing by shutting off the pain signaling that they're sending back to your brain and your spinal cord. As with anything else we do in medicine, they do come with their own set of risks. So we do these procedures under a sterile technique to help decrease the risk of infection as well as decreasing the risk of bleeding. We're also gonna inject a little bit of local anesthetic at the skin to help decrease the pain that you'll experience during the procedure. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free to ask the anesthesia provider who's coming to take care of you that day, but we look forward to having you with us. The day of the surgery, I'll see you in the preoperative area. We'll mark your hip. We'll get you taken back to the operating room, get everything prepared. There will be an incision created over the front of your hip. We remove the bad hip ball and we place the implants with state-of-the-art tools, expose the hip joint, and it's just a ball and socket joint. And that's why hip replacements work so well. After everything's closed up, that's the end of the surgery. And we get you ready to go back to the recovery area where you'll spend some time with the nursing, make sure everything's stable as far as vitals and all your pain is well controlled. And then you'll be taken to the floor where you'll spend the rest of the hospital stay and start your rehab and recovery. Here's what to expect while in the hospital after your operation. 
Physical therapy may try to get you up to the bathroom with a front-wheeled walker the day of surgery if the feeling has fully returned to your legs. The morning after surgery, physical therapy will make sure that you can safely get in and out of bed and walk and complete stairs if you have them in your home setting. We will go over a home exercise program with you before you're discharged. After your procedure, you'll likely have some prescriptions sent to your pharmacy. Your medical team will review these with you prior to discharge. They could include pain management medications, antibiotics, blood thinners, or anti-inflammatories. You'll also have some more options for comfort, like ice or elevation, that your doctor or therapist will cover with you. Congratulations on your new hip. It's time to begin your transition home. Most patients will return home the day after surgery. It would be beneficial for you to have someone available to stay with you the first night at home. You will go home with a home exercise program and will need to walk frequently. You will need to have someone available to drive you home the day after surgery. Please consider the vehicle that you will return home in. If the seat height is tall, you may have difficulty getting into the vehicle. If it sits too low, you may have trouble standing up out of the vehicle upon your return home. Here are the steps you should follow for a safe car transfer. Move the seat back as far as possible. Back up towards the car like you're going to sit in a chair. Balance on your surgical leg while using your non-surgical leg to push up into the car. Use the running board if it is available. Use grab bars or the car's dashboard as needed to aid in pushing up into the car. Scoot right as much as possible to provide extra room to swing your legs in. After your hip replacement, I do have patients use a walker for a couple weeks. You can transition to a cane, and then when you feel comfortable, you really don't need to have that cane. And I don't often do outpatient formal physical therapy after hip replacement because mostly activities of daily living and some of the exercises that you're taught in the immediate period after surgery are very sufficient for your recovery. Hip replacement pain tends to get better very quickly. I often see patients back two weeks and they already tell me they're feeling much better. You will notice some stiffness and some swelling where the surgical procedure was performed, but that will subside slowly over the ensuing few weeks and months. If you do not feel as though you are regaining strength or walking with appropriate gait pattern, please talk to your surgeon at your two-week follow-up appointment. Ask them if they would consider outpatient therapy to help improve your function. Activities of daily living may be challenging after your hip replacement, but Floyd Valley Therapies can help make sure your transition is a smooth one. Precautions following a hip replacement will depend on the approach used by your surgeon. Floyd Valley Therapies will review the precautions specific to your procedure. After your anterior or posterior hip surgery, keep in mind these recommendations and precautions. When you stand or walk, place only as much weight as you feel comfortable on your new hip. Sleep with a pillow between your legs for six weeks. This can help reduce any pain or discomfort when lying down. Keep your feet with your toes pointed forward. Don't rotate your leg too far out to the side. Grabbers and reachers and shoehorns will be helpful. Some things to avoid after surgery are bending at the hip greater than 90 degrees, especially with combined movements and turning the foot in, crossing your legs and extreme hip extension or bringing your hips back, bending over to pick things up, low chairs, especially for an anterior hip surgery. When dressing, we have some additional recommendations. Dress the surgical leg first with pants and undergarments. Don underwear and pants while sitting and then stand to pull both up. Use a sock aid and grabber as needed. Slip on shoes may be beneficial as bending to tie shoelaces may be difficult. Occupational therapy will provide other recommendations for dressing after surgery depending on how you are recovering. Lastly, occupational therapy will discuss your home and bathroom setup during our evaluation following your surgery to determine any additional needs. Once you're home, if you have issues or questions about your hip replacement, the staff at Floyd Valley Healthcare is a phone call away. And thank you for choosing Floyd Valley Healthcare for your total joint replacement.